What is going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here bringing us a video here today Bring guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to create your very own cool We'll call them this like bordered twitch panels or clean bordered twitch panels something like that Um, if you guys have no idea what twitch panels are and of course right below the twitch screen is the gameplay or excuse me, Well in front is gameplay right and right below is all the information that you guys would like to see like their twitter Socials donate subscribe merch all that kind of stuff I want you guys how to make these really cool 3d-esque like bordered versions of it I think it looks really cool really dope actually I just want to kind of show you guys on uh, how, to, how to create it which I think is pretty fun so all we're gonna be really working on is doing this really quick little sort of border to it and then just kind of getting the composition to look as like good as possible um the inside background like the whole gradient thing the background gradient picture whatever can all be replaced of course as well so you can keep it nice and original to your style or the background does not have to be fortnite i just chose fortnite for the sake of the video here today it can be whatever gameplay you uh, guys choose from it can be whatever kind of cool design you might find out cool texture noise whatever you guys want it to be i think it's a very clean professional look to it i think you can make your twitch uh page itself just look really really nice so i want to show you guys how to do it and of course two likes on the video equals a secret down below which will most likely be these panels here for you guys go ahead and download and fix and do whatever you guys want to do with them yourselves and with that being said let's just jump right into this video and that's it let's go all right guys so to get this thing going right here right now i'm going to start off with the actual dimension size of the panels and for me personally i go to file new and i go ahead and put on a 600 by 150 300 resolution right here so this is my sort of base to go with i'm going to press create for a second it's going to open this up in this canvas size. Now, this canvas size is kind of, I would say, in the realm of being a very default canvas size. I personally like to have it more of a sleeker, skinnier look. So, so for me, I would go ahead and press C on my keyboard, which is the crop tool, correct, right? And you can take the top side of this and just kind of drag this down a little bit more to give it of a more of a sleek panel. And also even move the right-hand side more towards the right if you don't want to have so much of that long space that you might not really personally need. Uh, and then you just press this little check mark up here. It'll refix that document size to get wherever you want, right? So also to mention, by the way, people have been doing a lot of these sort of like like taking a, a few panels that are important to them, whether it's like merch, maybe it's them subscribing to the YouTube because they want to build them on the social media, maybe the donate button itself are larger thumbnails or larger to be panels, right? So what I mean by that is they will usually sometimes have, if I use a crop tool, they would have panels that look something like this, right? A little more wider, more square, right? And they kind of have like, let's just say if it was a merch thing, oh crap, I gotta, I gotta draw. Um, pray for me, right? We're just gonna do this, right? And then, ooh, ooh, yeah, great, right? That's a shirt, they have another shirt over here, another shirt over here, big button that says like, you know, purchase or buy now or something like that. And they can have like the merch or the logo up here, right? Those panels as well, same exact format. If you guys want to copy the same sort of like tutorial that like you're gonna see in a few seconds here, um, like the whole you know the whole process at least, you guys can get a better idea of getting these bigger sort of rectangles as well for more important stuff. Pointing that out there, I'm gonna just kind of go with what I was gonna go with before, which is me kind of going with this like little sleeker, small little box to kind of work with, and I'm gonna to say to myself, this is what I want, and I'm pretty satisfied and okay with this, and let's just go ahead and get this thing going. So, six hundred by one fifty. Fix it with the crop tool, whatever size you personally need. And then if you guys want to see the size that I have right here right now, I can save it. So it's 508 by 120 is my current size that I'm on right now to get like after the, I fix it with a 650, right? I, or 600, right? So there you guys go. Very quick explanation of how panels can work. It doesn't have to be one size, one size only. And I would also suggest now that people are like moving around sort, sort of that way of making more bigger panels of the important ones in their case, right? So... Let's go ahead and start with the box. I'm gonna go ahead and just take this rectangle tool here, uh, right here, which is uh, U on the keyboard, by the way. I can just go ahead and simply just kind of like highlight the box very, very quickly. I'm not gonna kind of try to measure it, like uh, trying to like make sure it's matched on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead, right when I make that simple little box, I'm gonna press Control T on my keyboard, and then I can just go ahead and say, hey, let's just snap it to all these corners. It's a way easier, way more satisfying, and sort of like really mistakeless you really can't make that mistake okay once you've done it like this you can go ahead and just try to press enter or just simply press a check mark and now we can see uh why, why we use a rectangle tool is we're gonna be using the stroke option so if your stroke option is not enabled which is this one right here the box right at the word stroke if your fill is on for some reason which is probably like a black screen or something like that right you just simply just click on this little box right here and take this little red slash box and you select uh you select that and then you take your uh, stroke box and you can just make it whatever color you guys wish to i'm gonna make it this gray for now if you guys want the same gray that i'm using it is 4d 545a and this might not really matter for you um because the color might be getting changed like i said for the border is gonna be using like a gradient overlay so it's got, that's gonna be your main color source so it doesn't really matter what this color is <laughs> I can press okay 
When I've done this, I can go ahead and take my stroke uh, to the right of the stroke color is a stroke, uh, I guess you would say the stroke size, correct? If you guys go to Windows Properties as well, there's a better table for this, for me personally. Uh, make sure you guys, your boxes are showing on the inside. So this first box is saying this is inner, the second box here is center, and the last box here is the outside. So that's where the stroke was going to be like put. So make sure you guys put it on the first line, which is the inside. And then you guys just take this little uh, box right here. I'm going to type in 8. Just like so, and I think eight's a pretty good number to start off with. At any point of this tutorial, you guys can change the actual size of your borders, which makes it really, really simple and cool. And even move them if you guys were to take your crop tool, right? All you would have to do is just refix this rectangle because it's a vector as well, and it'll keep that size. So it makes it super, super simple for you guys to uh, mess around with sizing and stuff like that as well. Okay, so let's just make this a back background. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on this rectangle, and I already, I already saved a style for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of run through it for you guys so you can see it really quickly. This is three different things. It's a uh, bevel and emboss, uh, inner glow, and a gradient overlay. Very, very simple things, right? You can see how really, really nice and clean, sharp, it honestly looks on its own. I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on this and run through it really quickly. So it's bevel and emboss. The depth is at 542. I'm gonna put it to 550 for the sake of keeping it nice and even. I like my zeros and twos, okay? Uh, size at two, soften is at zero. We're gonna have our angle at 86, our altitude at uh, 32, and our highlight mode and our mo uh, shadow mode are on screen and multiply. Right, and also by default, these colors here are white on the top and black on the bottom. I personally made them a little more grayer tones because if you guys have this pure white here, right, you can see how it looks a bit, a little, a little bit too glossy, a little bit too modified in a way. It doesn't look kind of clean or 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 like kind of smooth in that way. So I personally went with a gray, which is basically all hex tones. Uh, just kind of spam the number four like six times. You guys get this nice little gray. And on the bottom here, besides being pure black, we have sort of like uh, a two spammed out, right? So this kind of makes it less sort of aggressive. I just made it like this, right? You can see this is how it usually would be. If you want this kind of look to it, even if you want to change the highlight color to an actual color itself, people would like to do that as well. I would suggest if you guys want to do that, absolutely go ahead, go for it. But I wanted the gray tone. You can mess around with this a little more. Have fun with it. This actually looks pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie to you. Oof, right? I mean, that, that kind of looks super freaking clean. So play around with it. If you guys want to make it look like this, this is hex code zero F and a whole bunch of other zeros at the end. And then the uh, multiply was on black. So, I mean, if you guys want to keep that one, that was a pretty good one, too. But for me, I'm going to go with what I had before, which was nice little gray tones for this uh, inner glow, right? Oops, let me turn that off. Inner glow. Oop. Bevel and emboss. There we go, right? Gray tones. So, we have the inner glow here, which is simply on linear dodge add, right? The color is a nice little sort of blue. The hex code is 8DC8FF. Now, for this one here, it's just a nice little sort of like, uh, I would say, a kind of like encapsulating and kind of. It gives it a nice little glow, a nice little sort of contour, and almost like makes the lines look a little more sharp because we have a simple two size pixel, one stroke sort of thing going on here. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> going on here. Looks pretty freaking dope. And uh, without it, it kind of looks a little bit too flat, in my opinion. So if you guys want to go with this, I would suggest you guys go with this as well. And for the gradient overlay, like I said before, this is where your colors are going to be coming in from. Mine was not on 100% opacity, that's why I gave you guys the original color. But. If you guys want to keep it on a 100% opacity basis, the gradient would have to change, right? So, blend mode, normal on the gradient overlay, opacity 100%, and the gradient, we're going to select this really quickly, and I have a black on this side, I'm going to make this a little more blue, and a little more lighter. So I'm going to say, let's go like with this, okay? I'm going to say this right here is pretty accurate and good so hex code 32363d i'm going to press ok and on the right hand side uh is going to be 43505e so if you guys take those hex codes and put them in you guys are good to go and my midpoint here is just move from the middle to a little bit more towards the right hand side so location is about 62 percent very simple right if you guys will type that in i can press ok i can press ok again and if once you guys are done with your layer style by the way if you guys want to save it like i personally did and how you saw me do it before is if you double click on this layer just type in new style or excuse me cl uh, click on new style press ok you can name whatever the heck you guys want to name it um and under your styles which is right above the blending options is a whole bunch of different styles that you guys can go ahead and save and uh, just really quickly when you're doing another panel whether you're a designer doing it for a client you can do this very very quickly it makes it really really easy right so like I was saying before as well, if you were to actually select on the rectangle and press U on your keyboard, you can bring up your options again. Uh, you can also open up your properties table again. If you guys want to at any point mess around with the actual size 
of the border you guys can let's say if eight was too much you guys want to like lower it down to seven you can absolutely do that right but i'm gonna keep mine on eight just for the sake of knowing make sure you guys know it's very easy to do that also scaling it same thing before using the crop tool it does the same exact thing then free transform it afterwards you don't have to worry about anything like that but okay i'm gonna also tell you guys really quickly with a black background right if you guys go to filter noise add noise a lot of people have been doing this as well on one noise percentage right one amount percentage on the add noise uh, gaussian for their dis uh, distribution and monochromatic which is going to get rid of all that red and yellows and blues right you want to select that it makes it black and white and you press ok <coughs> and you guys just kind of look at it it looks like, like a really cool clean crisp look to it i know a lot of the people like uh, i would say not designers but uh streamers themselves are kind of going with this route right here where they kind of have a twitter icon just very simple text and kind of going with this route it looks super super clean but i kind of want to make it a little more my kind of style which is like something like this so i'm going to go ahead and get with this thing going okay so i'm gonna go with a simple picture as a background a gradient and the word of whatever the social panel is right so i'm gonna go ahead and just type in twitter for my instance i'm gonna go ahead and just put this va on zero i'm gonna make my uh font that i'm using right now is uh, gotham black i'm gonna go with like what nine let's go with nine and like a little more bigger okay so i want twitter on the right hand side and more hugging the right hand side Okay, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this text, Control J on my keyboard, move it up, change this to a nice little subtext. I like to go with follow me for Twitter. For donates, I say tips are appreciated. For Instagram, I say uh, check me out. Or for YouTube, I say check out more content. So kind of think of these really cool little sort of ways that you can and can express uh, what they're about to click on, or maybe like a little like a nudge to hey click on this because of this reason, subtext wise, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in follow me for updates right and now i'm gonna go ahead and just make this a lot, a lot smaller than the other ones or the text itself the major text and i want this to be like let's just say two right i'll take the va split right here which is under the characters table if you guys don't have the characters table enabled go to windows character very simple right you can take the va split it puts the spacing between each letters and kind of gives them of course more space so y'all hear that what the hell is he okay anyway va you just take this bruh Okay, that was kind of weird, actually. Um, there was like someone, I guess like their key, I have no, it, it was okay. Anyway, <laughs> the VA spacing here, was I was saying before, is the amount of space that are in between each letter. So if you guys were to go ahead and just kind of zoom this out, right? Or excuse me, not zoom it out, but of course, take my scroll wheel, kind of move it up, right? You guys will give you more numbers. I'm gonna go with like a good old, like 280 is pretty good, right? I'm gonna center this. I'm gonna go ahead and move these two things down a little bit more to center them in a sort of like not that the word twitter but both of them i want them to be centered not just the word twitter i want these both uh, lines of text to be in the center which makes the twitter word itself be a little more further down than it would usually be right so once you're done with this i'm gonna go to this really nice little old pack of mine that i personally like to use for social media uh stuff right i'm gonna go like this put a little twitter icon right here Okay, so very, very simple stuff. I just add the text out of the icon of whatever the actual social media or the tab is all about. If it's a merch link, you can just type in like t-shirt, PNG icon, as I like to do. A lot of the times, you want to type in donate, maybe it'll be to type in donate, PNG icon. I like to just go with that route. I always get something I want, and that's what you guys can do as well, right? <laughs> so on the Twitter icon here, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer just like so. So I'm going to select the layer right below it and I'm going to put a new layer just like so. It'll make a layer right below the word Twitter. Okay. I'm going to take the red tag marquee tool. I'm going to take this, just drag this, and give myself a pretty good amount of space right after that I centered this. So I'm going to say this amount of space is pretty good for me. It gives me this breathing room as well for the text itself. I'm going to go ahead and right click, fill, contents, color, and make it black. Press OK. Press OK again. And then I can right click deselect on the actual canvas itself to deselect or control D to go ahead and deselect as well. And I'll take my opacity, just lower it by five, which will be 95. And then I'll press enter and all that good stuff. So you have a 95% opacity at this little sort of like little simple little box for these uh, social media. So I'm going to call this social box, right? For just to say it. Okay. And I'll just make sure this is also centered between now this line here and this line here, not this right and this, right? And you want to also make sure the Twitter icon itself is centered in the box, which I believe everything is, and we're looking pretty good. So, so the little last parts for me is, I'm gonna go to type in Fortnite. I already did, I'm so smart, right? I'm gonna put up this little picture here for a second. So right above this background, 
right? I'm gonna press Control V because I just copied and pasted it on my uh, canvas, whatever you call it. My clipboard, there you go. <sighs> right, I'm gonna take this picture. Now, I think the picture itself is pretty cool. I mean, even like keeping it the same color would be pretty cool, but I like to go with like matching and like giving color context for people who don't like want to see something immediately. They go, hey, I want to follow him on Twitter. I don't want to look for anything Twitter. I want to look for Twitter's branding. So that's why keeping color is a, lot, is a very strong suit sometimes. It keeps people from like wasting their time and kind of like giving like giving up on it. Like if they just say, I look for it. Oh, I don't see whatever. Like, right. You want people to be like, oh, there it is. I got it. Whatever. Right. So I'm going to go ahead after I put my picture in. I'm going to go into my adjustments, go to my gradient map. I'm going to click on my gradient map right here. I'm going to go to my preset because I already have a nice little blue that I want to use. And for this here, I'm going to move this a little bit more towards the right. Oops. Move my midpoint a little bit towards the right before I do this. Okay, I'm going to say okay. So on the far left side here, oops. On the far left side here, I have a pure black. And on the far right side, I have hex code 306787, right, for this nice little blue. I even might change this, though. I might want to say, like, something more, like, higher tone like this for the highlights. So 3480AC, press OK. And my midpoint here, besides being in the middle, I moved it more towards the right-hand side so that the, the white text can be seen a little bit more easier because the dark side will be more in favor, right? Press OK, right? And I don't have it on reverse. If you guys see it on reverse, it'll look like that, right? I, don't, I have reverse turned off. And uh, once I have this, this is looking pretty cool, I'm going to make another new layer right above the gradient map. I'm going to take my marquee tool once again. I'm going to simply make myself like a two pixel wide. It doesn't have to be exactly two pixels. It'd be four, three, whatever, right? Just a nice little skinny um, color of blue. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to take the color of the Twitter icon, press OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with that exact color. I should have probably just done like this, right? Right click fill. Once you guys in that marquee tool selection, color, you select actually the, uh, the little bird, press OK, press OK again. I can right click deselect it. And I want to put this actually above the social box as well. So this little line is going to be right above the social box. And this right here is kind of like another indicator, a very quick little sort of color coded indicator that this is what Twitter is. Um, if it was YouTube, it would be red, right? Of course, something like that. And if it was like donate, it would be like green or something like that, right? Kind of like money. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do one more little thing I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and take another new layer right above this little box. I'm going to call this little indicator. Cater, I stuck at spelling box. So hopefully, that's not right. I we'll see. Pen tool, <laughs> we'll see. The comment section will tell me. Uh, with the pen tool here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and make a nice little sort of. Uh, I'm gonna like kind of guess where the middle is and guess where the, like the top. Like I'm gonna say, just a very simple little guess of where the middle would be, right? I'm gonna say this sort of like click up here, follow this one little line right here, and click on the bottom right here. And once I've done that, I'll take my brush, right? So I'm gonna press B on my keyboard, just like so. I see my brush is now changed. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the brush and change my size to two and my hardness to 100%, right? And then what this is gonna have us do is, actually, not, I'm not gonna go with two, I'm gonna go with one brush size, okay? There you go. Now I was gonna say, if your pen tool, by the way, is like gone for a quick second, it's okay, it's just, it's just, it's still there, trust me. So bring out your pen tool once again, um, so unless, unless you press delete, right? Just so you guys know. Okay, right click, uh, it gives the option for a stroke path when you right click with your pen tool, and you guys are gonna go drop down the tools and go to brush, and press OK. So before I press OK really quickly, uh, once you press OK, it'll take the exact color of what is your foreground color and as a, the exact size of the brush. So if you guys are going with two, it'll be a little more thicker. If you guys went with, uh, you can't go below one, but one, it'll be more thinner, right? So I'm gonna press OK once I have brush selected, just like so, on a new layer, whoops. On a new layer, right? Right click, delete the path now to get rid of it. So it's the same color as this blue as this right here. So I just will really quickly like drag this out. You can see it's the same exact color. Right, but I want it to be a little more, I guess you would say, a little more brighter I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna go with a, a color overlay, take my blue, and make sure the, the saturation is pretty high. And I'm also gonna go ahead and go to uh, outer glow here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure this is gonna give me a nice sort of like glow as well with a blue, okay? I'll say something like this, like a, like a three size, zero spread, linear dodge add blend mode. I could probably put it on normal as well, but linear dot dot is pretty good for now as well because of the dark, uh, the dark background, right? 100% opacity, press OK. And I'm also going to take my eraser with a soft brush eraser, which means zero hardness, right? And give myself a nice little sort of like almost a flare look. All right, so if I were to zoom out now, you'll be able to see a nice little sort of flare. I like to put the flare on the far right side of this, so below the box right here. And then all the way on the uh, right side as well. So like that, right? And then we got ourselves 
a very nice clean looking what i also like to do is i like to take the follow me the subtext by the way and take the opacity and just lower this down quite a bit because i want it to be like a secondary thing you look at right so follow me for updates i'll have it on like 40 percent opacity or something like that right so now we're pretty much done and then you guys are good to go i mean this is literally the same as i think for the for the for, uh twitter one in my actual personal example i went with gray i went with blue for this one because why the heck not right so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today I think it was pretty cool. I hope that you guys will hopefully use it on the cool stuff, like I said before. If you guys were to want to size it and make it a little more bigger or whatever, you'll take your actual crop tool, you just crop it like so, right? The background itself. And then you take this little rectangle, so this is a vector, you can press Control T, and then just kind of move this to the angle it needs to be. You can take this, move this kind of stuff too. Have Twitter be here if you want it to be like a merge thing, right? So it's very, very quick and very easy if you guys go at this path and using the Twitter, uh, excuse me, using the rectangle tool as like your sort of basis for your stroke and all, like, all that stuff like that. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy one more time. Uh, of course, turn likes on the video because it's secret down below, which will most likely be some really cool panels for you guys to download and go ahead with. So of course, the faster you guys hit that, the faster it comes out. Um, with that being said, one more time, I like to say with that being said, is that a thing? Anyway, I love you guys. If you guys have not subscribed already, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe. Check out some other videos, all that good stuff. Also follow me on Twitter, at SysHQ. Check out my cell for any pre made packs as well as five bucks as well. Much love. I love you guys. I'll tell you guys later. So HQ out. Don't keep, keep smiling. <laughs> Do not forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking bread, guys. Later. <laughs>